Internet's we back at another week. That's right. Let me tell you something. Shouts to everybody who checked out last week's episode with the queen, the one and only, Roxanne Shantae. Let me tell you something, man. That episode was, was, was man, I really enjoyed doing it with just a, a, a person who never gave up on herself. And then, boom, the Netflix movie. Have you checked out Roxanne? Roxanne on Netflix? It's dope. It's hip-hop. It's, it's, it's great acting, great directing, and I'm so happy. So if you haven't checked out the Roxanne, Roxanne on Netflix, check that out. And also check out our episode from last week, the one and only Roxanne Shante. Let me tell you something. Last week, I didn't even do a bumper. For those, for those that are keep, keep me count at home, I didn't do one. You know why? Because I, I was fucking sick as a dog, man. Let me tell you something. I know this sometimes sounds corny, but health is wealth. Like, yo, I got sick. I got knocked off my feet. I was like, damn, like, you know what? It, it, it's, it's crazy to not feel like yourself. It's crazy to, to not feel like you're normal the way you move, to be, like, weak or, or man, man, shit is fucking crazy. But I'll tell you one thing, okay? I'm, you you got to make sure you take care of yourself. You got to make sure you listen to your body. It, it, it's unfortunate. I don't even want to get into this shit like that, but it's unfortunate that sometimes we worry about more how we look than how we are. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like health, is, it's crazy that, like, you know, I still haven't been able to grasp a full hold on health. Like, you know, I try to eat a salad here, fucking some kale and shit like that. But it, it, I, it's, it's hard for me to fully get into the health, uh, you know, fully healthy, but I'm trying. I'm trying because I understand that it's important. So I guess what I'm saying is like, yo, you want to look good with Balenciaga and Jordans or whatever the fuck you're wearing. Because, I mean, I'm still wearing all that shit. Except I don't wear, like, high design and shit like that. I'm, I'm never into that shit. But I will say this. You may look good on the outside. But in the inside, you know, you may be sick. Or you may not be healthy. I don't know, man. I do think that in the future, I hope that more more people take... You know, they're health serious. I mean, we lost, and, and, and I lost a lot of friends. And, and you know, it's it's important to check on yourself and check on the doctor. And just really understand that health is wealth. You know, I will say this. Whenever I tell people to do this, they understand what it is, okay? And that is take out your phones, or if you're on your laptop, open up Twitter, open up Instagram, and check the fuck in. I appreciate each and every... Body who reaches out, man, I've been getting so many emails, so many DMs, so many messages of people for worldwide listening to the show. One thing I really like is that, you know, when you set out to do a podcast, you know, it's like you try to, for me at least, I want to be different. You know, I've been doing the podcast game for um, over nine years. I don't want to do the same thing. And I like that my objective is to, you'll never know who's going to be on the show. It could be a, a TV actor, it could be an artist, it could be an athlete, it could be an entrepreneur. You just don't know. And, and, but the most important thing is you learn something from each and every one of them of, of how they move or, or, or how they started their business or, or, or the failures or the struggles or the regrets, whatever it is. And I think that is amazing that how you're trying to portray something is how people are receiving it. So, Internet, thank you. Thank you for fucking with the kid, okay? But make sure you check in. Tell me where, you, tell me where you're checking in from. Tell me, what, tell me what's going on. Tell me what you like. I want to shout you out at Premium Pete, at the Premium Pete Show. Hit me. Check in. Let me know where you're checking in from. And if you checked in before, don't worry about it. Check in again, okay? But make sure you also tell a friend and tell a friend. Subscribe, rate, and leave a comment, okay? Whether that be on SoundCloud or iTunes. Subscribe, rate, and leave a comment. Okay, Intense, let me tell you something. This week's episode, I, I'm truly, truly excited for you to listen to it. Okay, it's another one of them food entrepreneur stories. Okay, that I love so much. I mean, Intense, that know that I love me, know I love hip hop, know I love sneakers, know I love food, and know I love my kids. Okay, and I love a couple of people. I love friends. I love friends. Friends become family. Come on, you know what it is sometimes, man. Sometimes I let people come over and let them try my mother's baked ziti or chicken palm. You know, li- listen, okay, you could be special like that sometimes, you know. Internets, don't be hitting me up asking to come over moms if I don't know you like that, though, okay. But this week, 
we sit down with the one and only John Seymour, founder of Sweet Chick, okay? For those of you who may not know Sweet Chick, Sweet Chick is a chicken and waffle spot, but it's more than a chicken and waffle spot. It has so much just, you know, so many different menu items. Nas is a partner in it. They're opening all over. They're opening in, 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 in Met State, in, in City Field. They have a, 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 a spot there now. They're opening in Long Island City. They're opening in Brooklyn. All in, in L.A., listen, internets, okay? I want people to understand that no matter who we have on, you're going to learn something, okay? It ain't easy to open a restaurant. It ain't easy to, to understand the ins and outs of it. The struggles, the failures, how to get a partner, how you know how to raise money, etc. Okay, internets. I present to you the John Seymour, founder of Sweet Chick, episode of the Premium Pete Show. Let's get to it. Cheer. Come on, everybody, get set, let's go. It's the next episode. It's the Premium Pete Show. News, interviews, all of the info. Listen up, it's the Premium Pete Show. If you want to scoop in the low, down low. Listen to the show, cause Milk said so. Fuck what you heard, better act like you know. It's the Premium Pete Show. Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting here, it's a long time coming, man. We, we, we try to make this happen a bunch of times. Dude uh, uh, has a busy schedule these days, very busy schedule. My friend John Seymour. Now, what do we call you? Co-founder now, Sweet Chick? Or we just call you president and founder? Yeah, you know, co-founder, CEO of Sweet Chick, I guess. Saying CEO sounds totally fucking insane to me okay. because, you know, I don't know. You feel like you got to go to college to become a CEO. Right? Na- native New Yorker. Native New Yorker. More importantly. High school ent- graduate. Entrepreneur. It, Entrepreneur. I, it, it, people embrace Hustler. this these days. Hustle, okay. Yeah. For people listening who may not know, yes. okay, what the fuck is Sweet Chick? Sweet Chick is, you know, a restaurant that I opened five years ago in mm-hmm. Brooklyn. Um, I knew the neighborhood. I wanted to open a spot that was just really for the neighborhood. I wasn't. I didn't set out to say, yo, I want to open a restaurant, partner with a celebrity, and open up multiple restaurants across the country and grow this brand into a big thing. Um, you know, again, when I say I'm a hustler, I'm always in the in the, in my mind. I'm always going to be thinking about what's next, mm. right? But really, what I wanted to do was open a spot that people in the neighborhood that I lived in fucked with and would come to a couple of times a week and have a good fucking time. So, how do you come up with Sweet Chick? Like, where does that come up from? So, you know, I had a burger spot. That was the first place I ever opened. Um, that was already open for what was the name of it? It was called Pops. It was a little burger spot. That was my first you know, business. Um, and, uh, how old were you? you I was, uh, I mean, that's 12 years ago. So I was 28. Okay. So when I opened up pops or 27, when I opened up pops, so I had already had that in the neighborhood. I, so, so, you know, I had, I found the spot where the original sweet chick is. That's what happened first. I found the spot. I knew the guy who had, it, it was an Asian spot. He was going out of business and it was a corner spot. I liked it. So it was like, all right, what, you know, what do I, what can we do there that's going to be fun? Is this that and the other? So I heard the story about how chicken waffles um, was originated in New York in the jazz clubs. And I got to thinking, I said, you know, there's no chicken and waffle spot, right, in New York that's like, you know, like the Roscoe's of New York. Sure, yeah, you've sure. got a couple of spots in Harlem that are known for chicken waffles and, and whatnot. But, but then I, you know, I took it a step further and said, what can I build around that? Because, you know, I'm a fan of that, and it kind of has a, had a cult following at the time. I wouldn't even say Chicken and Waffles is as big as it is now than it was five years ago. And and uh, I was kind of like, you know, I felt a, almost a little offended because I was like, you know, L.A. gets the credit for Chicken and Waffles. You know, the South obviously owns fried chicken. And I was like, you know, I kind of almost felt like, damn, you know, we need our own shit. Mm. Um, in New York, meaning in in New York, you know, like I was like, we need our own shit. That's like, you know, it's become that could be a staple for that food. But then I took it a step further, saying like, how can we use that as a vehicle for other flavors? How can I add to the experience? So the cocktail program right, had to be very, it had to be special and important and thought out. And then it was also like a neighborhood spot. I don't know if the neighborhood is going to come out to eat fried chicken and waffles two to three times a week and come into this spot. So I was like, let's build a menu around it. So like we're known for chicken and waffles, but you can go into any sweet chick tonight and on the special board might be a seared duck breast. Mm. You know, we have a a, a braised octopus uh, as an appetizer, you know, the list goes on. So what, what I'm calling it and and we kind of came up with this name 
in my office is new American comfort food. Because you always hear that new American, uh, you know, new American food. Like, oh, what's that new restaurant? Oh, it's new American, right? So it's like basically they're saying fancy fucking American food. But we're new American comfort food. So it's like a, a, a twist on Southern food. Obviously, chicken and waffles involved there. But we're experimental and we're trying to create amazing fucking dishes. So, you know, I'm not a chef by nature. So I brought in amazing chefs. I said, I can't just have a dude who who, who can cook a line, you know, for a regular sure, restaurant. Sure. I was like, I got to have somebody who's got talent, somebody who's creative. I want to. How do you great find somebody people. like that, though? Really through friends. That's how. That's really how I found. You know, the original crew that that opened the restaurant with me was through friends. My original general manager, Kyle. Shout out to Kyle. He big I, Kyle. Yeah, he. Um, I met. He was living down on the block, um, and I had just bumped into him, and I knew he was managing another restaurant. Um, and he had just left there. So I was just like, yo, what's up? You know, I actually hired this girl, uh, first and I realized very quickly, I said, I can't open this restaurant with this girl. She just doesn't actually have the uh, experience. And I bumped into him and I was like, yo, I'm opening this fucking spot, man. So if you, if you're looking for something, you know, come rock with us. So he came, took a look. He was like, cool. I'm in. Um, same with the chef. I opened, almost opened the chef with a different, the restaurant with a different chef. And right before the, we started doing tastings. I realized like this guy can't pump out, you know, the amount of food that, that, that I needed to do to, to get this restaurant going and kind of did a last minute. Um, you know, it's the New York hustle, man. It's like always find a fucking way out. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So you know, how, how do you, how do you maneuver that? Not to cut you off, but yeah. how, did, how, how did you realize that they couldn't pump that out? Like, how did you, how did you? I just saw the signs, you know, like, like there's a few things, right? So one thing, trust, Right. I got to fucking trust you a hundred fucking thousand percent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what? I'm not going to be a micromanager. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be on your ass about every little fucking thing. If I'm hiring you because you have a f- specific fucking skill that I don't have, um, then you better be on point with it. And if you tell me something that you can accomplish something and you fall short of that, I have to find, I, I kind of think that there's something suspect going on. Like, if you tell me, yo, I can accomplish this. I understand people are always going to have bumps in the road and things to work out, and I'm always there to support that and try to f- help all of us collectively find out how we can always be better. But if you're going to tell me something and it's, it's, it's kind of it comes across as if, like, you just sold me a fucking, you know, what's that saying? A bag of fucking grapefruits? I don't yeah. know. Have or you, you sold the the Verrazano Bridge. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I yeah, I, I ain't buying it, you know? So I gotta I gotta check that and then I gotta make my my move to move on. You know, it's like I can't, you know, I can't um you know, you talked earlier about putting people on. It's like this ain't this ain't just I want this to be a great experience for everybody that works for me. Like we, you know, we have people that have been with us since day one sure. at all of our restaurants. But you also got to fuck with us. How many employees would you say you have in total? Now we're close to 200 employees. God damn. And you started off with just you and a couple other people? Yeah, me and a couple other people. Um, I, I, the people who opened the first restaurant. I was just in the new restaurant we're opening fucking next fucking week. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, one of uh, the employees who's been with me the whole time, uh, a server named Holly, she walked into the Queen's spot because she's going to be training the new employees and and ho- you know holly's not the only one there's a bunch of them they've been there since fucking and you know that that's like normal to say in a corporate world right like if you work for pepsi if, if i'm the ceo of pepsi and i go oh fucking joe schmo he's been here for 15 years he's worked his ass or g or general electric they've been here for 25 years this is the restaurant business sure. you don't get a job as a fucking server to be a server forever all of these people have passions. You mean you get your foot in the door? See? No, you, you, you're just paying your rent. You're yeah. in New York City. You're a kid. Like, I'll take Holly, for example. She's a girl from Nashville. She's up here trying to be a dancer. You know, I, I don't know all the intricacies of what she for wants sure, to do with sure. her life, but she has her own dance company. Um, I think it's called Of Bones. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she needs to pay her rent, too. So she's doing, she's pursuing what she loves, which we always try to support. For sure. Um, and, and I've actually sponsored some things in the past for her with some beer and stuff. Um, and that's just, I'm just giving you one example, sure. but you know, they don't come here to, they, they just got to pay their rent. She doesn't want to be a professional server forever. Some people do. And some people do graduate to become managers of the store and then regional managers. Right. So like some people want to climb this as we grow because we're, we're obviously growing and we want to promote from within. So I'm always going to welcome that. But some people, they, they want to pursue their dreams. And at some point, hopefully their dreams come true. But if they don't, 
they hopefully there's also a home that we can build for them here. You which know, is super dope to be able to do for sure. You know, people from what I heard over over the years, the restaurant business is tough. It um, you know, if you're not always there, you could get robbed blind. This is what I hear. Not meaning yeah, yeah, yeah. in your restaurant, meaning of in course, general, yeah. right? What what made you even you talk about Popberg? What made you get into the fucking restaurant business stuff? I mean, my a father, family? my yeah. father was a bartender, right? Okay, so I grew up. Um, Where? Where'd you grow up? I grew up on the Upper East. Okay. York, you know, the uh, middle class Irish and Albanian kids okay. and Spanish kids will call it Ma- York. Mom Yorkville. and dad. You grew up. With? Yeah, mom and dad. My father was a bartender down the block from my house, my apartment. Uh, my mother was a nurse. Both of them are from Ireland, right? So, um, you know, Irish people. In general, I think uh, we're fucking, you know, we're a little, you know, nuts, I mm. think, in general. What, what do you in mean great, by that? In a great you, way. If in you a, could explain. In a great way. There's a movie called State of Grace, one okay. of my favorite movies of all time. And uh, the character, uh, Jackie Flannery, played by this guy who just won the Oscar. It's one of my favorite actors of all time, uh, Gary Oldman. Um, he plays a crazy Irish guy from Hell's Kitchen. And, uh, you know, and, and Sean Penn plays uh, another guy from Hell's Kitchen. And this cop's talking to him one time. He's like, oh, I think you guys, I heard you guys are tough, right? I think, at least from my opinion, you know, the, the, the thought process of like Irish, because, oh, they're tough guys. Sure. And he goes, we're not fucking tough. We're just fucking crazy. <laughs> you know? So, you know, I, I, I like to think that we have a little something in our bloodstream that, that makes us, uh, you know, tough, crazy, whatever it is. Um, and I think I got part of those genetics. But anyway, my parents are from Ireland. So they teach us kind of how to work hard. You know, um, you know, just that sense of if there's a wall in front of it, you know, I can go right through that fucking thing if I want. Right. So, like, that's just where that that drive maybe comes from. I didn't know that I had that drive. I definitely didn't have it in school. Um, You know, I I had it definitely for hanging out. I love to hang out and and cause trouble. But um, so anyway, back to the restaurant stuff. My father was a bartender. Me and my brother used to lie to kids in school and say he owned the bar. (laughs) because <laughs> we were probably, you know, you know, back then you're kind of like, oh, this kid goes, my father's a doctor. And you're like, yeah, my, my father's, father's a-, a bartender. We were a little bit embarrassed, to be yeah. honest with you, you know, um, which which is, is weird to think about now. But, sure. Did you have a good relationship with Pops? Yeah, me and my father was super tight. Um, my brother was kind of more of the mother, um, and me and my father was super tight. So we, uh, you know, I used to go there and bartend, you know, like. Uh, At what age? Fucking nine years old. You know what, <laughs> what, what were you making? So, I mean, it was an Irish bar. So there was no cocktails, right? There was <laughs> no cocktails. Buck Rogers? I was doing a, a Captain Morgan shot, a pint of Guinness. I could pour you a fucking pint of Guinness like nobody else, is, <laughs> you know, nobody else in New York City, let me tell you. Um, you know, Jack and Cokes, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So in this bar, you know, think, picture of it. It's a dark, you know, kind of old Irish sure, bar. Sure. All the guys around it are at cops. Fireman, sure. fucking the garbage man, the guy who works at the bodega, you know, like all that shit. So very New York scene. And um, so my father, I'd come in there and, you know, I, as a kid, little kid, my father would just be like, you know, go get me a case of beer, empty this cooler, you know, do this, 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 that, and the other. Let me sit down. He'll go sit down at the end of the bar, talk shit with his friends. I'll go behind the bar. His friends will all make fun of me. So imagine, you know, being 13 years old, what was cool then? I had an earring, right? Mm. So... You know, I'd go behind the bar and they'd all call me a faggot. You know? Really? Oh, yeah. Forget it. Marty. They'd be like, Marty, look at your faggot son, you know? Mm. This is the type of lifestyle, right? I don't know. But it, I, I loved it. Now, right? you had one ear in, right? Only one, yeah. I never had the double ear. I never got to that. Who even made those rules up at the time? Was Back that, then, was if you was had the a, double ear, and you know, also if know, you had but, the right ear, yeah. it was only the left. Yeah, you had to, but, you but only who do the made left. that up? I don't know, man. Because I, 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 remember, I remember, you know, that very clearly that, you know, that... Uh, if you had both, you know, they, people would make fun of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you had the left, you were legit. If you had the right, you know, it was no Suspect. good. Yeah, so, but, but, but I'll tell I'm you what, left, to I'm my a, father's yeah. friends, any fucking ring that you had in your ear, yeah. first of all, they didn't call it an earring. They would say, look at this faggot with the ring in his ear. You know, that's what they used to call say to me. What was your response to I'd that? I'd be like, eh, fuck you. you know? <laughs> I would give it back to him. I mean, think about it. This is like you break, you know, breaking balls, right? Sure. What is, you know, you, you, you grew sure, up around sure, a bunch sure. of Italians yeah. and whatnot. Breaking balls. This is what we, what we did, you know? Um, people can't take it anymore. You can't break anybody's balls anymore. Sure. Everybody starts to cry these days. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm with a little bit of a throwback, Pete, I think. For sure. No, I respect that. Yeah. You know, so, um, so, you know, that's where the hospitality comes from, right? So that's the front of the house stuff maybe that I got early on. So my father was kind of like a neighborhood 
you know, very well known in the neighborhood. You know, he was like, he was Marty from the bar, the Irish guy, you know, this, that, and the other. So, you know, we would hang out at the park. Once I got, became a teenager, we'd be hanging out at the park and, you know, causing trouble. And my father would know about it the next day. You know, he'd be like, he'd be like, uh, oh, I heard you were fucking jumping in the East River fucking mm. yesterday. You know, like, what the fuck are you thinking? And I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? Because it's like some lady walking the dog near the park was like, oh, there goes the Seymour boys jumping in the river with a bicycle. causing havoc yeah so but but that's where the kind of community building and the kind of the hospitality side that i find that sweet chick has where that maybe originated you Mm -hmm. know so so that's kind of how i got into that later on in life um you know graduated high school i didn't uh um you know i didn't go to college yeah Um, reason why you didn't go to college Ah, uh, you know, I was too busy fucking hanging out. Yeah, you, had, you, know? you didn't have no time. Yeah, no time. I am, same here, I yeah. understand. I was, you know, going hard. So, If you ever look back at it, would you have went? If you, if, you if I look back at it now, no. Because I think, you know, where I am now today is, for a, sure, is, for is sure. amazing and, and it's crazy. I've, you, found, you, know, you found your way. I found my way somehow. So, um, so... I'm, I guess I'm giving you the fucking life story right now. No, right? no. So, so, yeah, so, so, so you didn't finish college. So, I, yeah, I didn't go to college, and then you know I hung out in the park, and you know worked different jobs. I was a doorman, so like I, you know, when you're Irish in New York, in, in Manhattan especially, your father's Irish, you you know somebody who's the superintendent of these buildings. So when I was 15, I was a fucking doorman in the building, you know. So sick every, every summer, I, and I was making 500 dollars a week, and I was fucking caking. Really? You know, I was like, yeah. What about ha- Christmas time? Well, Christmas time when I when I was eighteen, then I started working full time. Oh, okay, so that's when you get hit off, lovely. But um, but I was fifteen working in the buildings, and I had to lie to the people and say I was eighteen mm. because you know they were like I was working midnight shifts, and they'd be like, "There's a it can't be a fifteen year old kid watching the security of the building of these rich people." Like, you know that they they would fucking <laughs> lose their shit, bro. So. Yeah, I'd be fifteen years old there, and I'd be waiting for some like rich, you know, single. Milf Jewish lady to invite me up to their apartment. It never happened. And uh, you you learn a lot as a doorman. You learn a lot about people. I mean, what would you say you learn? You learn a lot about what money does, right? Because you see a lot of these guys. You go, hold on a second, man. This doesn't make sense. This guy's five foot two. He's got no hair. He's got a big belly. But the girl he's with, he drives a very nice car. But the girl he's with, she's a she's like a nine. You know, mm. like, that doesn't make sense. And you're like, oh, okay, he's fucking a doctor. So he's a surgeon. And you're like, okay, cool, it makes sense. But you learn about people's habits too. You know, like what they do late at night and kind of about their lives. And you kind of, it's like a, very, it's like a window you kind of watch. Um, these people, these older people at the time, they were older than me, you know. So you kind of get a little insight into what it's like, you know, to lives of people. And people don't realize how much doormen actually know about them, you know. Because it's like you see them in and out every day, who they're with, all this and that and the other. So... It's kind of an interesting insight. How'd you make it out of uh, being a doorman? So when I was 19, I, uh, my father passed away when I was 19. So, so rest and now, in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. And that was my guy. So I went a little buck wild crazy. I was drinking, drugs, all that. I ended up getting sober at 21 years old for the first time. And then Which, I, did you go to like a program or something? I went to, I lived in a halfway house in Arizona. Um, did that work for you? Uh? It worked for me because I was so nuts that that uh, and I was so bad that that it was like obvious to me. You know, it was like I was like, yeah, I got to chill. So I ended up really getting sober at 24 years old, mm. um, and I was became an electrician mm. because the guy I was living with in the halfway house uh, was who's my boy Sammy, who, who passed away since as well. Um, it was kind of like an older brother to me, and he his father was an electrician, and he was an electrician. And in Queens, so I got put on with somebody they knew, and um, and I became an electrician. So I was doing that for like, actually, no, like that was at twenty one, and uh, and I was still kind of you know nuts or whatever. But um, I ended up you know a couple of arrests and stuff like that, and all you know to deal with all that knucklehead bullshit. shit, knucklehead shit, you know, um, and. But still to this day, you have, so you don't drink at all anymore? No, nah, I don't drink. I haven't drank in 16 years. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Is it hard? Is it something that- I'm used to it, man. Of, yeah. Yeah, I'm used to it, man. You know, like, to me, like, people ask me, they go, oh, you don't drink? I go, no, nah, I don't drink. And they, they're they like, why? I go, oh, I break out in handcuffs. Mm. You know, that's my, I'm, I say I'm allergic. I break out in handcuffs. Yeah. That's my, like, thing. Because, yeah, I was a fucking complete maniac, you know? Sure. 
So very different from who I am today. So, yeah, 16 years. So I got sober. Um, then I started bartender. Mm-hmm. So I got a job at an Irish bar uptown. Now, now, did you... My father was also a sober bartender as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. My father was also apparently nuts but did before you, I was born. <laughs> did, did you plan to be in the same footsteps as your father? I didn't plan on it. It's and just something that you, I knew. What about when you were there? Did you say, like, holy shit, like... I'm, um, I'm a sober bartender, just yeah, like my, my yeah, dad was, yeah. and he was he was already passed away. At that yeah, time. he had already passed away at the time. I, I'd also worked in restaurants, like bus boys and stuff throughout the years, you know. So I had some you know restaurant stuff, and, and it's a waiter experience. But, yeah. yeah, just here and there, you know. But uh, but definitely more from the bar perspective. But yeah, definitely, I was bartending up in an upper uh, 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 on a, uptown on a fucking Irish bar, and uh, a neighborhood bar. All my friends were coming in. Actually, oh shit, Sasha right here was uh, how old were you? Fourteen. She was the girl Shout on the phone. Shout to Sasha. Shout to Sasha. She was the phone girl. Really? Yeah. yeah. We've come a long way, Sasha. And I used to make drinks for her friends. <laughs> Underage friends. So, uh, so I'm working up there, yeah. And I was like, I mean, it is. It's a, the parallel, I was like, it's just crazy. Like, I didn't set out to say, oh, I want to follow my father's footsteps and become a bartender. Who the fuck would do that? You know, like, really, when you think about for it. Sure, don't, sure. From, from being an elementary school kid embarrassed to say that your father's the bartender you would tell people that he owned it to now becoming yeah i'm a bartender yeah which is whatever you know how did you how did you you know you mentioned something before that uh, was powerful you said yo some people don't come to be servers but they're they're they have to pay rent they have to do this yeah how do you not and i feel this happens so much maybe in new york or just life how did you not get stuck in that position because it's very simple you, you sometimes you go to these yeah. bars you see a bartender 30 fucking years there yeah he's just there they know everybody they know the fucking yeah. how did you not get stuck i mean you know i think i think there was something that always wanted more right so like i was like you know i probably just wanted more how i ended up leaving the irish bar was my some of my boys were promoters in clubs downtown mm-hmm. so you know we're going out to these clubs and they're like, why don't you fucking bartend at one of these clubs? Started bar- bartending at the clubs um, and making more money. Mm. The clubs you're making six hundred dollars a night. Sure. So doing that, and then I was, you know, I took the test. I was like, I want to do something else. I took the test to become a fireman. Mm. So Did you ever get called? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I took the background test. I took the physical. And I took the written test. And then I took the background test. And the background test was fucking me up because I had a, a bunch of shit from when I was younger. And, uh, and that was like a fucking lot of paperwork to deal with. And, uh, I met my wife right at that time. That was 12 years ago. Mm. Yeah. About 12 years ago. And so I was still, I was still, they had called me in for the psychological for the fire department. Um, when I met my wife and I was still, and at that stage I was bartending in like nightclubs and, mm-hmm. you know, doing all right, making some money. And so the fire, fire department well, didn't well, work. No, when they, when, so basically I decided against it because I was making too much money. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm making too much money. Yeah. So I was like. From bartending. From bartending. In literally. clubs. Yeah. You know, there's, a, there's lots of ways to make money in New York City, but for bartending sure. is one of them. For sure. For sure. For sure. You know, there's also on your off time, there's other ways to make money too, but you know, that's uh, for a podcast a million years from now. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't want that. But listen, <laughs> honestly, w- 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 let's take it now. W- let's move it forward. You spoke about opening uh, Pop Burgers. Pops, Pops, yeah. Pop, Pops, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, burger Spot. It's a Burger Spot. How much did you... Yeah, so... How I much did it cost yeah, to open so it? Yeah, so I stacked up some bread. I had bread, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, I want to do something. And my wife really put the battery in my back, right? Mm-hmm. She was kind of like, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, at this stage, shit, yeah, I just got married. I got, I got married quick, bro. I was mm-hmm. like, this is the one. Boom. My friends thought I was crazy. Mm. Sure. We're still married to they this always day. do. They always yeah. do. Yeah. We're, we're still married to this day. God so bless. I had stacked some bread. I was like, yo, what am I going to do? I got to do something, right? I didn't make, uh, so I was living in, in uh, Bushwick at the time. Mm-hmm. And in Williamsburg, this is, you know, uh, 11 years ago, um, you know, real estate was going up. The standing that had this bread. I was like, what can I do? I said, maybe I'll buy something, a crib, you know? So I made no money on the books, zero money on the books. I hope nobody from the fucking IRS is fucking uh, <laughs> wanting to listen to you on your podcast. If they do, go fuck yourself. I hope not. Uncle Sam, don't listen. Yeah. Get off the Get fucking off the podcast, fucking Sammy. Podcast. They're listening anyway, somewhere. They, they got a microphone somewhere, a satellite listening to us, probably. <laughs> so, fucking, I go, I find one of these new condos, 
and I go, I'm going to try to fucking buy this condo. It was a half a million dollars. I said, I'm going to try to put some money down on this to see what the fuck happens. And they wanted 600000 I lowballed them for 500000 and they fucking accepted it. And I was like, fuck, now I got to buy this crib. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if this is a good idea. And I was looking on Craigslist, literally looking on Craigslist for businesses. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm like, businesses for sale, literally. And I'm just like this, that, and the other. My wife went to pastry school, mm-hmm. was very passionate about food. And I was like, maybe, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily, I was thinking I was going to be cool. I was, I had a plan. I was like, I'm going to get a taxi medallion. Mm. And I'm going to be, I was like, I remember saying, I'm going to be the taxi cab king of, the, of New York. That was my shit. That's insane. So, and, 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 like and thank God I, they, man, back then they were mad today. money. And yeah. now today they're not worth shit because yeah. of fucking Uber. Yeah. It's like I, I, I probably could have, would have done the same thing if I would have bought a Blockbuster chain. Sure. When was the last time you went to Blockbuster? Sure. Netflix so, knocked them out. Yeah, exactly. So, fucking. Uh, so you talk about the on Craigslist. Uh, yeah, so I'm on Craigslist and, and I come across this, this thing, this guy selling this burger spot in Williamsburg. So I go over to it. I forget the name of the spot. It's on Havermeyer. And he tells me he also owns another one called Kitchen Delight, which is on North 8th right off of Bedford. And I knew Kitchen Delight. And I said, you know what? I like that one better. He wasn't selling it. And I said, yo, the fuck? I don't want this one. I want the other one. And he just kind of had his hands full. He invested in something in the city. And he ended up selling it to me. So it sold to me for like uh, $90,000 mm. space. Had kitchen equipment, everything. I, uh, I fucking took it. Boom. Pretty much. I had about 100 grand. Mm-hmm. So I renovated the shit myself. My wife, me and my wife, jackhammering the floors. We had to lay down concrete. I laid down the concrete myself. Um, you know, I never really ran at my own restaurant. Sure. And basically, so the idea behind it was this place was selling frozen burgers. It was really a shithole, you know? But I was like, I can make this better. So going back to my father in the bar, he had a little kitchen in the back of the bar, but no cook. And back in the days, and the guys would come in, the neighborhood guys would come in, they'd be like, you know, he, would, they, there was no menu. He would just be like, you, guys, you want a burger? Sometimes he'd give them away for free because the guys would be there every day and whatever. And he'd be like, yeah, all right, cool. And he would go to the fucking D'Agostino's and get meat, you know, in the morning. And he'd make his own burgers, you know, no fucking distributor, none of that shit. He'd make his own burgers by hand and he'd cook them for the guys. So I was like, I can t- take this place and I can make it better. I said, I'll make the burgers like, by hand like my father used to do. I'm going to call it Pops. The menu was a picture of my father, an old school photo of nice. my father. So essentially it was a tribute to my father. And, uh, and my, the idea was I said, listen, if I can open this, if I can make fucking 5000 a month on this thing, and then I'll open another one. You know, and then I'll open another one. Then I'll open another one. How did it do the first year? It did really well because that's the year the recession hit. Uh-huh. So basically, remember when I told you about the loan shit? Yes, yes. So all at that same time, they, I, they gave me a no document loan. You know, they said, I said, I don't make nothing on the books. They gave me the loan, no problem. I never took it. And I'm glad I didn't take it because at the time, the shit was fucked up. And even that apartment wouldn't have been worth what, 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 what Pops has taught me and what I've gotten from it since then. But, uh, but we were profitable from fucking day one, you know? And how long did it stay in business? We closed it this past summer because Is the, there a reason? Uh, yeah, the landlord, uh, the landlord's fucking says he's knocking down the building. He doesn't know what he's doing. He, he wouldn't renew our lease. So we were running with no lease for two years. Mm. So, and then at the end of it, I was just like, you know what, man, I'm so focused on what I'm doing now. I was just like, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to not have like emotional ties to to your business and you really just got to think, think strategically. Um, so the time and effort that was going into that, where knowing that we were probably going to be out of there anytime, I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Being that, uh, you know, it was named after your father and you had a picture, was that, but, you know, I know you said you don't have emotional ties, but was that hard to close down? Because that was like it your was. baby, right? Personally, it was. Personally, it was, you know? And then uh, uh, I'll tell you something. And, you know, I talked about being Irish. Um, and one of my other employees the other day, who's also from an Irish background, says, just Irish that shit up. So when it comes to things, what we do is we take our feelings and we just bury them way down south, mm. down, down in. And then we just move on, you know? Mm. It's not... It was emotional for me, and it was, but it was still a moment for me because I had already kind of graduated from there. So it was definitely something to, like you know, contemplate and think about. And the fucking hilarious thing about it is where Pops was is right on the corner of Sweet Chick, right? Mm. Sweet Chick is right there. And where Pops is, is in between my wife has a restaurant named Pearls, which we could talk about later. But so Pearls and then where Pops and Pops is open. So Pearls is there, Pops and then Sweet Chick was on the corner. The space where Pops is now, the fucking landlord rented it out to a sex company. 
What? A sex company. What, 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 <laughs> the, 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 that does what? They sell dildos and fucking, oh my God. Uh, and fucking lubes, the right? The pink pussycat? What the hell's going on What's over there? What's it called? London. It's called London. Shout out to fucking London. So listen to this. So I had a big, a big uh, decal, right? That said pops and uh, a picture of my father's face. You know, my father look at this is the tattoo. I'll show it to you. Right. So this is the menu. It's like, you know, my father looks like an old gangster. You know, that's mm, like, mm. that's like the photo. Classic. And uh, can, can, if people Google pops a uh, burger, they can see uh, that the uh, image. Prob- yeah. Probably come up. Yeah. I actually got this tattoo on New York Inc. Actually. Okay. So that'll come up too. But, um, um, so it's, what's hilarious is. I just was like, we'll just let it close. And I heard it was going to be a sex shop. It is what it is. I had this big decal with a picture of my father's face on the wall. It says Pops, you know, this, that, and the other. And these guys painted the whole fucking place, but they left the decal there. And they put a rack up against it with fucking lube all over it. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so I go, you know, at first I, I was like, you know what? I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in there with a can of spray paint. I'm going to knock down the rack. You know, very dramatic. And I'm going to spray paint over it to dead it, you know, to buff it. And then within 10 minutes, I just started laughing. And I said, I walked in there and I looked at it and I was like, my father is in heaven looking at me thinking I am such a fucking dickhead. Because I have a funny sense of humor, I think, sometimes. And to me, it's actually hilarious. I'm kind of like, so it's, it's still like, I still walk by there and I'm like, this fucking guy, you know, he's like, he's laughing at me now. He's, oh, he's not laughing. He's probably pissed. But I'm la- I'm laughing. I'm like, ah, look at you. You know, I got you fucking on a wall full of lubes. It's hilarious to me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so at least it's, it's not the dildo wall. So it's, it's not the dildo wall. You, you know, if it was the dildo wall, you know, that could be problem. You, you didn't want to ask them to cover that up? Or? Nah, you know, I didn't even talk to them. I just, you know, I just... Do you plan on? Nah, not even. I, w- I went in there recently. I went in there to look at it. Just do they know? By. Do they know that you used to own that? Nah, they don't know. Uh. They don't know. I just think, I kind of think it's funny. I, you know, it's kind of almost keeping his memory alive in a, in a joke, you know? And he'd be, you know, he'd be fucking just knowing his personality. He'd be kind of tight about it, but he would know that I'm fucking with him. You know, for like sure, I'm breaking his sure. balls. You know, so you know, you open up pops. You're open for what? Twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. Twelve years. You you, you help open your wife's restaurant, Pearls. Yes. You have Sweet Chick starts off in Brooklyn. Yep. Now, how many locations? We're opening our fifth location next week. In Queens. In Queens, Long Island. So City. where is it? It's in Brooklyn. It's in uh, Lower East Side. Side of Manhattan. Prospect Heights. Prospect Heights. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, it's going to be in Long Island City, Queens, and we're doing City Field now. We're okay. doing a we're in doing the a Mets. Counter in City Field with the Mets. Yeah. So you're in the stadium. In the stadium, yeah. That's a big deal. Super fucking big deal. You know, you've been in. It's funny because for a kid who really, you know, didn't wasn't a chef really wasn't in the restaurant business yeah. you're you're embedded in, in the yeah, restaurant yeah. business oh, yeah, yeah. you know what would you say is has been your hardest like struggles of the restaurant business i mean so i'll tell you what i'll tell you i mean you know i don't know how much time we got because i can tell fucking stories but i'll tell you like just just from a stress level right you talked about restaurant level restaurant business is very fucking hard it's very slim margins and it's a lot of fucking you know you, you you're always paying out you know it's 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 always on you you got to pay um i'm blessed the business is fucking doing great the business is doing great but it's not without its problems right and for example um you know i'd open the brooklyn spot the williamsburg spot and then i opened the lower east side spot next um and i got some you know other investors and stuff and sure. um after I opened the Ludlow spot, I was like, okay, now I want to take this bigger. Um, obviously, we all know Nas is my business partner. We, we, you can't skip over that, actually. How, <laughs> in, in, I, I didn't know you were going there yet. Yeah, yeah. How did... Okay, so we'll get back to yeah. some of your toughest struggles. Yeah. And, well, actually, you know what? Finish, finish yeah, so, your toughest struggles. Yeah, so this is, this is one of my toughest, stre- most stressful times. So um, Nas, you know, I meet Nas... We, we sit down for dinner. Next thing I know, I mean, I could tell the whole story later anyway. Um, you know, and I also have some other investors and I'm raising money now. I'm raising money uh, at, a, at a very real level to open up multiple stores, right? So, Do you want this to become a franchise? Um, not necessarily. No, I, I, I think owning and operating it is the best way to go anyway right now. Um, you know, I think we may, we have plans to do some stuff in London that will be more of a license deal where we'll operate, but it's, it's kind of a hybrid of a franchise. Um, but, but more well, back to this is that you're raising money. Yeah, we're raising money on a real level, a lot of money. Um, you know, obviously Nas now is investing money as well, and I'm in this process now. I've never done this, you know what I'm saying? So like, 
it's all about it's all about finding creative ways to make this shit happen. It's like I've never done this business plan and sure. raised the stuff, so I had to figure that out. Learning how to raise yeah, money, which is that's a whole nother thing, and that that's just that's almost more fun to try to figure these problems out. Like I like to solve problems, um, and that's what you do all day long in the restaurant business. But the 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 original Williamsburg location, which was the you know the real bread and butter, right? It was the one that was like LES had just opened up, so it wasn't like super popping like it is now, and um, you know the Williamsburg spot was was super popping, like and it, as it still is. I mean, we, it's crazy that business is insane. But why do you think? You know, um, obviously I've been there, sweet chick, so many times, yeah. seen it from the beginning. I mean, I love so many of the uh, items on the menu. Like I don't even get chicken. Yeah, like I get shrimp. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I love that, the shrimp and, and that was the point of making a full rounded menu. I love the kale BLT yeah. salad. Yeah. Love the macaroni and cheese. But here's the thing: Why do you think people keep coming back? Well, I'll tell you why I think people keep coming back, and it, it goes back to like my experience in the restaurant industry, which is really my experience in the bar industry and really kind of stems from my father, which is building community. Right. So I think our staff is not, it's not based on me. You know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm at the top of the, 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 the totem food chain. pole, the food chain up there, but, but it really comes down to the staff inside of the restaurant. What, what the experience that people have, the community that we build, people want to be a part of something. And, and I love to be able to, to build that out, as much as I can. I think that's one of our biggest strengths at the restaurant. You know, we got to hit on all levels, right? The food has to be consistent. It has to be fucking awesome. Uh, the drinks have to be great. You but know, not to cut you off, but you, you, say, you say this, but how does it get done? Do you have meetings every day? Do yeah, you have fucking... Constantly. Like, constantly. What, like, what, what about LA? Like, uh, do, you, do you do phone... Or you have Skype. someone who runs Skype? Yeah, Skype. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, it's, const- it's a constant, constant battle. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant battle to not be lazy, to do the small things and to be great. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just what it is. And it's like nowadays I'm I'm in an office, right? You've been to my office sure, on, sure. on Ludlow Street uh, and, and behind the coffee shop. And it's it's building a team, right? And it's building a team and having people on the team that buy into the vision of the brand, man. Sure. And the vision of the brand isn't to make millions of dollars. That's not the vision. That never was the vision. It was to really create something dope. And as long as we keep that as the focus of it and not try to focus on being, I mean, obviously now, especially now I have more investors and the more investors I have, the more I have to look at the numbers and make sure that, that we're as profitable as we can be. But it's a blend of also the experience and, and the customer service and, and, and all of that, everything, all the other little things that go into the restaurant experience for the average person that walks into the restaurant. Like, we got to make sure that that shit is special every fucking time. Mm. And the bigger we get, the harder it is. Sure. But it's about hiring great people, man. And it starts from the general manager of the restaurant, um, who's one of the biggest fucking people, and, and the, you know, the chef at each restaurant, the head chef at each restaurant. I'm mean, having an executive chef over um, all of the, the, the head chefs of the restaurants. Um, and then I have a, a COO, who mm-hmm. back to is the original GM, Kyle. And I have great GMs in all of all the spots. And that's what it is. And it's about keeping people inspired to just be dope, right? So, like, in my office, you see the sign that says, do dope shit. Like, let's just be dope. Because being easy, you know, is, is you know, or being, being whack is, like, easy. Like, not thinking of all the details and not putting 100% into shit and not always trying to be the greatest is easy. Um, damn, my headphones just... just freaked out but when they bugged out yeah, no, yeah it I'm, sounds so good I'm, I'm good i'm good um sounds so good <laughs> so so yeah what were you saying you were saying so you know it's just a it's a constant battle to to always be great um back to the other side of the, the stressful part of it is there's always things that come up like i tell people about the restaurant business and, and, and owning multiple restaurant businesses as a ship that's always fucking sinking mm. you know what i'm saying you just got to try to make sure it doesn't sink on yeah, you you always like there's always gonna be more problems now the ship is fucking amazing man this shit is a yacht right now like sweet chick is is the ill fucking yacht that shit should be in a rap video mm. you know what i'm saying like mm. it's the ill yacht i'll do a backflip off that shit i'm doing backflips off it all the time <laughs> but all night i'm down in the in the hull making sure that these fucking holes don't fucking keep popping up or different holes don't come because shit's just going to happen, man. And that's just life in general. Shit's going to happen is how you move through those things and how you, how you stay focused and how you just commit to fucking being great and fucking getting through it and being fucking unstoppable. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it probably takes to be great in anything, you know, anything you do. 
You know, um, let's take a quick break. I want to come back and uh, I want to continue to go into, uh, we'll finish off the struggles that you spoke yeah, about yeah, the restaurant yeah. business and how you eventually met up with Nas. Yeah. And he became a, a partner. Yeah. Internet, so you listen to the Premium Pete Show sitting here with co founder and president? Yeah, the guy. We're not doing CEO. Chicken right? guy. We're doing the chicken guy. Yeah. John Seymour, sweet chick, sweet chick's own. And actually, many other own. You know, you get, you get so many fucking stores now with the Ludlow Coffee. Uh, your wife got pearls. pearls. Yeah. No more pops, burger, but no more pops. Rest in you peace. Know, you never know. I might come back one day. Internet, don't go nowhere. Be right back. Cheer. Hey, this is the R O X A N N E. And if you want premium, and I'm not talking regular, if you want premium, you know it costs more. Get on the Premium Pete Show, please believe it, baby. Intense, and we're back sitting here with my guy John Seymour, the Chicken King. Hey. You, you know what you did? You reinvented chicken and waffles. Would yeah, you I say think so? so. I think so. Because, you know, you, you think about it. Sometimes something comes out and it just like, it stays and it it just becomes like, it is what it is. It doesn't get reinvented. Like yeah. uh, like Sweet Chick has, has, you know, took the chicken and waffles to New York City. And then you've you done so many things for the community. I remember block parties. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Prodigy, and Omar yeah, perform. Joey that was Badass. His, that was his last performance yes, in New York. Yes, yeah. He went out to Jersey. Jersey's not really New York. He went out to Summer Jam. No, no, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And, 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 you know, Prodigy for... Um, yeah, P, P, like, P's been fucking with us for a while, too, yeah. man. He did a new, they did a New Year's Eve thing with us when he did his book, uh, the cookbook. Commissary, yep. Um, I let them use the kitchen to shoot all the, yep, the, yep, the, right. the scenes for the book. I actually connected him with my boy, who's a chef, to style the book for them. And then when he did the launch of it, he did it at Sweet Chick and, you know... Rest in peace, you know, yeah. P, P uh, you know, it's crazy, but um, P did, uh, it's funny you say the last uh, performance he did was at Sweet Shirt, because the last podcast he ever did was mine. Wow. He did the Father's Day podcast. Oh, wow. Um, that I had, and one thing I'm always glad about for people who may not know that are just listening now, is that, um, you know, he was talking about how much he loved his kids, and how important they were. It wasn't like, no, just... Yeah, rap yeah. shit, New yeah, York yeah, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. type of fuck yeah. shit or beef shit. Yeah. It was real uh, fatherhood shit. But uh, rest in peace to Prodigy, man. But you know what? Speaking about hip hop, speaking about artists, Sweet Chick is thriving. Yeah. You've done a bunch of different businesses. You're clean and sober. Um, Nas becomes your partner. How the fuck does that happen? Yeah, that was fucking crazy. So um, we had opened up the Lower East Side, the second location. Um, and. I got hit up on email um, from Peter Bittenbender, who is the CEO of Mass Appeal. Um, I didn't know Peter at the time. And Peter was like, yo, I'm doing my um, my anniversary, like, uh, you know, it's kind of like an anniversary party, and he wanted to do a dinner, and he was like, you know, I wanted to um, do it at Sweet Chicken Brooklyn on Bedford. So I was like, you know, I, I saw the email uh, it came through the website, you know, and I saw the email and I saw the signature CEO Mass Appeal. Sure, sure. And I was like, oh, I fuck with Mass Appeal. And Mass Appeal had actually done a story on me through somebody else, um, you know, a few months before that. Um, and I was like, I said, you know, we don't take reservations in Brooklyn. And it was like, you know, 25 people or some shit. And, but I was like, you know what? We'll make it happen. We'll make it right. It'll be dope. So he was like, cool. So I remember that night. I was in the Lower East Side. I had a meeting there, and I was like, let me go back and kind of check in, make sure everything's cool with these guys. So I go in. I meet Peter. I'm like, hey, cool, man. You know, um, and we ended up, we ended up, there was a person that was with him there that I had a mutual friend with that, you know, and that we just started talking, and Peter was just like, yo, man, you're fucking, yo, I love Sweet Chick, man, the one on the Lower East Side, and, and this one is great, man. You know, and he was one who was like, you know, are you thinking about doing more of these? And I said, yeah, I mean, that's the plan. You know, I said, sure, sure. I just opened the Lower East Side, so I'm kind of tapped out right now. Um, so, but, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. So Peter was like, um, yo, we, we should we should build. You know, we should talk. I said, all right, cool. Let me, you know, I'll, I'll hit you up and, and see what's up. That was like a Friday, let's just say. So I hit him up like on the Saturday and was like, what's up? Let me, let me know when you want to sit down. He was like, you know, I'm, I'm around Monday. So I went into the Mass Appeal studio, I mean the Mass Appeal uh, offices, offices yep. um, that Monday. We sat down and he was like, yo, you know, I know Nas is looking for some projects like this because, you know, Nas is a partner at Mass Appeal. And I was just like, what? I literally was like, this guy's full of shit, mm. you know? And he was like, yeah. He said, you know, you know, it could be something he, he would be into. 
So I was like, cool, right? you know, whatever, let's see what happens. And um, I left the office that day, and Peter actually texted me later that evening. He was like, um, he goes, yo, I think Nas would be interested in this. He says he knows about the restaurant because we had done a few music live performances. You know? Sure. So we were kind of already like, you know, on the music tip. So the one year anniversary of Brooklyn, I did the Raekwon. That mm -hmm. was the first performance we ever did. I did Slick Rick with uh, a live band, Bad, Bad, Not Good. And all these performances were all like pop-up surprise stuff, you know? Um, so he was like, yo, and his friends, some people that he knows, knows about the restaurant. And they, they fuck with it and they like it. And he wants to meet you. I was like, holy shit. You know, Nas, you know, no lie, Nas was my favorite rapper. Sure. You know? Um, so, you know, I was just like, holy shit, this is crazy. So then Peter hits me later and he goes, yo, Nas wants to fly you down to South by Southwest to meet you because he was going to be doing some something with Mass Appeal live at a barbecue uh, South by. I had never even been to Texas. And I was like, word. <laughs> so you, so you jump on like, a plane? Cool. So me and Peter actually really started building more about the business and I was telling him kind of what my plans were for the future and, um, you know, he was like, uh, we started just started. What about building. even money? Does he know how much? Because the thing yeah, is. Yeah, well, I had an, I basically came up with this plan of how okay. much money I wanted to raise. For sure, for sure. And so you had a plan. I had, I had, yeah, I had, I had the workings of a plan, but it was also a work in progress, you know? Sure. Um, and, and I, you know, I didn't know how to do this shit, man. You know, like Google is, is Google is ill. Yeah. You know, like, you know. Like I say, I didn't go to college. I'm screaming, fuck college. Google's the shit. You know, you can really find out whatever the fuck you want from Google and if you can read. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you have the determination to find it out, you can find out. I found out so, I found out so much shit. If you have the determination like me, I'm a motherfucker that will sit on Google and Google the shit out of Google to find the answers that I need, you know? And I'll go through, you know, the pages at the bottom? For sure. Like I go to page hundred if I have to, you know. Keep on, keep on pressing. Yeah, I bet that, you none uh, of you right, motherfuckers yeah. out there been on page hundred of Google. I've been there. So, so I go to Texas, and um, I bring Kyle with me, mm -hmm. and uh, who's a huge hip hop fan, you know. So I, uh, you know, we're, we're staying at the Massfield house and sleeping on the couch, and uh, I'm like, holy fuck. So I go um, to the South by thing, and. I see Joey Badass there, actually. And I remember this. I remember going up to Joey. Because I, I met Joey when we opened up Brooklyn sure. um, at the store. And we became cool. And he's uh, we done we did that curry chicken sure, together. Sure. There have been a bun dun bunch of things. Yeah. Right and, um, and I remember seeing Joey outside the dressing room. And I said, yo, um, I'm about to meet Nas. And I'm literally about to talk to him about maybe getting involved in Sweet Chick. And Joey's like, oh, shit, that's crazy. And uh, next thing I know, I'm in the dressing room. It's a really small dressing room. Nas shows up. And I just it was like, you know, I gave him a pound. I was like, what's up, man? And I just kind of broke it down, like, kind of the essence of what we're doing, you know? And it was it was pretty crazy, you know? And, you know, from outside looking in, I had Kyle there, right? So Kyle will tell you the story goes, he was, like, watching it. He was like, yo, this shit looked like you guys, like, knew each other already and we're just like two dudes that were just building on something and like he was like i could tell Nas was like yo i fuck with this dude and really that's what ended up happening so he came up to the restaurant uh, up to brooklyn next time he was in new york we sat down we had dinner in the middle of the restaurant um just chopped it up run the jewels was doing a concert um on the water uh, on kent avenue mm. and we were t the playoffs were on so we were talking about basketball. At the time, I lived right around the corner from the restaurant. And uh, I was like, yo, you know, I mentioned, I said, yo, if you want to see the game, man, I said, you know, after this, whatever, I said, we go to my crib and watch the game. And he was like, well, I got to go to this thing. So he was like, if you want to roll. So we go down to the river a few blocks away. He gets on stage, does made you look, gets off stage, and is like, yo, let's go to your crib and watch the game. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is going to happen right now. Like, we're going to my crib to watch the game. And I said, you got trees? And he was like, he's like, nah. I said, right, cool, I got you. And uh, I told Kyle, I said, yo, grab a bottle of Henny from the restaurant. So I called my wife. My kids are sleeping. I said, yo, Fallon, um, Nas is going to come up to the to the crib to watch the game. And she was like, uh, okay, cool. So 10 minutes later, we're upstairs watching the game. 
the the story that I tell, which is something just a funny little note from the night, was we're watching the game, and his Hennessy commercial comes on. You know, he was had that Hennessy commercial True. where he's on the train or whatever, and we're all watching it and we're not really paying attention. And I remember I just looked at Nas and uh, we just all started laughing because he had a, a a glass of Henny, you know, and an L in his hand, you know, and it was just like, this is too funny, man. You know, this is just too funny. You can't make that type of shit up. No, it was just, it was too funny, man. So, and then, you know, from there we kind of built, we met a couple more times and, and, um, you know, since then, you know, you know, he's invested. We raised the money that we were looking to raise. We opened LA which uh, that Netflix doc I mentioned drops, um, Mass Appeal did in, on the 30th. And mm-hmm. you can actually see the opening of, of the L.A. restaurant, the party, is, is, a, is a pretty nice scene of that, um, if you guys, anybody cares to check that out. Um, Where the opening of L.A. happened. You, you, you know, you, you, I think I mentioned to you before, but, you know, I remember a time you told me that uh, Nas wasn't just somebody who invested. Like, he really, yeah. like wanted to make this company like grow and and be a part of it hands on and everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the dope part about it, right? So like obviously, you know, a dude that you've been a fan of, um invest into something you believe in, something that you work hard in, then you guys, you know, become friends and then um and but but he cares about the fucking thing, you know, like it's, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, Nas is Nas, right? He's an icon in the hip hop sure, world, sure. you know, um pop culture all that um does he need to be associated with a restaurant he doesn't need to do that um but you know when i bring it back to the community aspect of it that's one of the things that he keys in on a lot too that he also just has observed it's not like me giving that speech to him or anything like you go in a sweet chick man it's the and that's when i knew we had something special was you look around the room and you see people of every color every background every every pay wage sure, yeah. you know what i'm saying like you see you see uh, uh, every every uh you know sexual orientation or whatever um you know you see everybody there it's a very you know that it's it's a very kind of special place for that um and i think nas also saw that and felt that um and yeah man he just really loves the brand man and and you know i don't know how to how to explain that or you know he he's probably the only one that could really explain that but you know he loves being a part of it man and sure. it's, it's, and sure. that's and that's the thing like you can get a celebrity investor to sure. like, I don't, it I don't just look good. Yeah, you know and I, mean? I don't tell Nas like, "Yo, post something on Instagram." Yeah, I don't do that just because. And 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 when I go back to like when me and Nas met, I think a lot of the synergy between me and him just on a personal level is that you know I'm a New York guy and he's a New York guy, and you know you know as a New York guy that there's something a little bit different sometimes about us, and you know you know growing up in New York, you know. You move a different way. Sure, you're not a move, yeah. You, you, you're around people your whole life, and people are all on top of each other. It's just different. So I think, you know, same thing. With, like when I say, like, I don't I don't go, yo, Nas, can you post something on Instagram for Sweet Chick? I've never said that once. Sure, sure but you know you know, you know what, um, obviously, from people who don't know or the people who do know, Nas has invested in plenty of tech oh, yeah. things. Yeah. So he's ahead of the curve in a sense of yeah. like, He's building his he's investments been, yeah, he's and money. Build, yeah, he's been building his investments and money, and which is why, like Peter, when Peter was like, "Yo, I think Nas would be interested in something like this," it's probably because he he didn't have anything in this space. Sure. So, like, you know, he's definitely tech heavy and and across the board in tech, and he's invested into a lot of different companies. Um, and so, I think he was just at a at a, probably at a point in his life where he was like, you know, I want to. Um, go wide and invest into a lot of things. You know that that term that people use, diversify your portfolio. You know, I think that's what he was also doing at the same time and being a smart businessman um, because there's a lot of uh, value in restaurant brands. For sure, uh, for sure. Shake Shack uh, is worth a billion dollars. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You know, so you know, um, there's a lot of value in these restaurant brands. You know, one thing um, that's special for you is that you're able to maneuver and shake. Um, you know, shake hands and, and rub shoulders with different type of people. Yeah. What's one thing you would say you've learned from Nas by him being your partner, you know? Um, I mean, you know, that dude is very, very, very cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, like in a sense of, um, you know, he's very calm and, and like, and observes a lot. You know, from what from being around him, I see that he does that, and I think that's something that also has, you know, 
is something that I could use more of in my life, mm. right? Because I think sometimes, you know, I've been risk taker, taker at times and you have to be, um, you know, at certain times. And, and uh, But you also have to be able to sit back and observe. Um, and I think that's something about him that like, um, and also I think he's he's also just one of those, he's an artist, man. And he is so, he's just like, like when I say cool, it's also slash real. And like these words are just words that people use a lot, but like he's a dude that's very authentic. Like, and, and that's also a, a term that everybody fucking used the shit out of in the past few years, authentic. Um, but he's, he's not moving for nobody. You know mm, what I'm saying? Mm. Like he's not going to switch up because somebody thinks he should switch up. You know, he's going to really fully make that decision on his own. Um, and and it's very admirable because people jump out of the window for shit all the time. For sure. You know, um, and people that I still I, that I have the utmost respect for, um, you know, in business and music and all that. People will jump out the window sometimes for a lot of shit and say yes to a lot of things. And, you know, I think he's one of those dudes that's like they probably don't make them realer when it comes to like that type of of person. Um, and, and that's like something that's very admirable about him. And it's something that like, you know, um, another, another thing I'd say is it's just like inspiration just for the entire brand because he's that type of dude, you know, um, I mean, J Cole said it best, uh, let Nas down. It's like, you don't want to let Nas yeah, down. Yeah, sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to let Nas down because, you know, he's just that real of a fucking dude that mm. it's not about money. It's not about this, that, and the other. It's like. And and now at this stage of the game, I mean that's my fucking dude. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure, that's like sure. my brother. Sure. So like, um, you know, um, yeah, it's just it's 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 cool. That's special, man. It's cool. Special for the brand. Yeah. You know, uh, for someone listening right now that um, maybe wants to get in the restaurant business or is in the restaurant business but is still trying to figure it out, what, what would be some advice that you have for them? All right. So when I wanted to go into the restaurant business, everybody told me not to do it. Mm. that's all they said don't do it i went to a couple of people that were in the restaurant business um and i was like when i when i when they told me don't do it i was like fuck you like you're doing it what the fuck do you mean don't do it what are you afraid that i'm going to compete with you what what you know this that and the other like i kind of took offense to that what i would say is they were partially right right it's a very very difficult business you know think about you know, any any other business that, like, you know, us New York guys could get into, open a sneaker store, this, that, and the other. A restaurant is very fucking expensive to open, for one. Um, you're going to put, you know, you're going to spend, for a proper restaurant to open, you know, you can spend about a million dollars to open that shit. Mm. You know, 700000 to a million dollars to open a proper fucking restaurant. On top of that, you got to fucking be ready to pay X amount of rent every month off the bat and then X amount of mo- money on your fucking salary, on your salaries for all your employees because you got to pay them. And then you got to pay for all your inventory for food, and then you got it's like it's it's, it's like the game. And you but how do you even know where to go for food? Like meaning, like how do you know what place to go get this or that? Or Google, bro. If you don't know Google, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. If you don't know Google or ask somebody. But you also you it goes back to mentioning you being in the community. Talk about being Irish. I feel like you come from a community of you can find out a lot of information from other people. People are like, oh, I'll introduce you to this person. Yeah, I mean, this I, person has a, you know, a food, uh, a, a business or yeah, yeah. whatever. I, I, I would say yes, but I, I didn't have that. You know, I, I would say like, I haven't had many mentors um, just in general. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've had mentors for other maybe types of things, but like, I, you know, and I'm, you know, I find mentors in, in other people, you know what I'm saying? That I maybe don't even know personally and I'll try to find out about their story or I'll, um, you know, it's, uh, people also, sometimes people don't necessarily always want to tell you what to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like some, you find sometimes people don't really want to tell you or they don't know what to tell you. I have kids hit me up, kids hit me up on DM and I try to be as available as I can. Sure, sure. And it's crazy because kids come to me and they're like, yo, like, I don't know what to do. Or like, I want to do this clothing brand or I want to do this, like, you know, what advice you have. And it's like, it's hard to give advice. The advice is find a way, Mm. you know what I'm saying? It's Mm. like, find a way to make your shit happen. If you want to make it happen, as far as the restaurant business, I'll say it's very difficult because you need a lot of money up front. Um, and like, if you open up a sneaker store, right, I know you're a sneaker guy. Mm -hmm. 
and you know you buy all the inventory no matter what if you close that sneaker store down you're still going to have that inventory you can sell it sure, on sell it off yeah you know the only thing you're coming out of pocket for is the is the general construction like the design of the store and the rent and you know you can open one of those for 50 to 100 thousand mm-hmm. dollars you know um and if you lose it you lose it. it is what it is but um you know you only need maybe one person to fucking work in there you know, I need fucking, to operate the fucking restaurant, like, I need fucking, you know, during a, a regular shift, I need, like, five guys for the kitchen. I need two, at least two servers, even if it's, if it's going to be even slightly slow. I need probably two servers. I need a bartender. I need a fucking busser. So it's like, I got a lot of people on there, you know? That's the, when you really think about it, it's crazy. It's almost overwhelming yeah. sometimes. And the restaurant business is, like, one of the highest failure percentage businesses there is. How long before you saw profit when Sweet Chick? Uh, Sweet Chick was did pretty well out the gate, man. To be honest with you, you know, um, we were also running a lot leaner. So like, I was working on the floor. I was busting tables. You know what I'm saying? So like, early days, it's like I'm busting tables. You know, um, and then you know what to you can kind of forecast it and trend what you're gonna do with the new restaurant when you open it and what kind of sales you need to hit early. But you gotta like, um, I've been very lucky. You know, I didn't open these restaurants with a lot of cash reserves. You know what I'm saying? Like in the perfect world. If it costs you a million dollars, let's just say, to open a restaurant, you have one point five million in the bank. That other half a million dollars is for for the shit when it doesn't work out early. For sure, <laughs> yeah. I never had that cushion. You know what I'm saying? I've never rocked like that. I'm just like, yo, we're gonna make this fucking thing work, and we're gonna figure out a way. Mm. We're gonna find a solution. What's next for Sweet Chick? What's next for yourself, also? Um, for Sweet Chick, obviously, we're opening the the Queens Long Island City location, which is also congratulations. I mean, that's also something that's been in the works since day one when I met Nas. You know, he literally was like, we got to open in Queens. And uh, and so I'm glad that, you know, this opportunity came for the space and we're doing it. And you can see the fucking Queens Bridge from outside of the restaurant, which is super fucking dope. You know, he was there with me the other day and it's like he's there. He's reminiscing about the neighborhood. So it's really dope and it's special. Sure, and I think it's, good, it's special yeah. for him. And, it, you know, it's going to be a great vibe. Yeah, it's just, it's really cool. Um, we're actually doing a private room in the back inspired by his father. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's going to be like a jazz vibe. So it's like, you can come if you want to rent it out or whatever, fit like 25, 30 people back there. It's going to be like a totally, it's not going to look like sweet chicken in that back room. It's going to mm-hmm. feel like a, a fly, like jazz club. Um, so that's opening up. City field is opening up tomorrow. Nice. It's the fucking opening game tomorrow for the Mets. So I'll be over there. Um, What's next? I mentioned something about the UK. We might be doing something out in London. Mm-hmm. I think that's very possible. London, Sweet Chick? Yeah, London. So uh, that's very possible. And that's kind of cool because um, I'll get to go over there a lot. And I have an aunt that lives over there. And I'll be able to fly right over to, to Ireland to see my father's grave and bring my kids there, which I've never done. So I'm planning to hopefully maybe do that this summer. Um, so right now... I mean, I'm I'm want to sit back this summer. I want to make sure that we're handling all of our operations tight. You know, we opened up three restaurants within one year, and that was the original first plan. Mm. You know, so that was like when you know they that that plan was to open up those three restaurants. When so. you try to open up a restaurant, you know, well, not try, but when yeah. you go through the process of opening a restaurant, do you even though I'm sure it's I mean I don't know, but I'm saying I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it's yeah. fucking stressful. Oh yeah, very. Do you ever feel like when you get past it, like? maybe sometimes like uh, we over exaggerate or stress ourselves out or it really is that stressful um i mean i've been told that i handle stress very well mm-hmm. um because you know if the, the stress is there it's just there man you know like worrying about the shit ain't gonna help you you know what i'm saying getting the next thing done is gonna help you you know what I'm saying? And just working on the next fucking thing. But right now, I'd say this this instant um, is probably one of the most stressful times um, in the history of Sweet Chick. Just because we're opening the City Field location tomorrow. We're opening the Vernon location tomorrow. I told you about the Lower East Side. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with the Department of Buildings. The, the entire building has no gas. So that's a fucking major headache. So these are like, you know, we talked about those problems. Like these things happen. Department of Building comes in. They say your fucking meter and, and it, it's a leak in the street, a gas leak in the street, and the whole building shut down. True. Sure. And it's on you to figure it out. It's on me to figure it out and fucking, you know, they don't, the manual for how the Department of Buildings works is like, it doesn't exist. You know, it's like you, you got to fucking have a, a degree to in, in architecture. So you got to bring in good people, you know. Luckily, I got Albanian friends that are fucking plumbers and i got some old irish guys in con ed <laughs> <laughs> hey listen 
Listen, this is the, this, is this is what is, makes the world go around. You know? This is what makes the world. But go I'll around. tell you, I wish I, you know, I wish uh, I wish it was thirty years ago. Sometimes because then we I wouldn't have to deal with half these problems. I'd, sure. I'd give the guy an envelope and we'd be done. Sure, those yeah. days those days are those gone. days are long those gone. Those days are gone. You get arrested now. Yeah, you know, uh, I mentioned to you before if you wanted to franchise uh, Sweet Chick, you said no, you want to own and operate. In a couple of years from now, how many Sweet Chicks do you plan to have? Is there a number? Um, I mean, I'll tell you what. I think I think every major city could have a sweet chick. Mm. Um, I think uh, the thing that we're doing at City Field is really interesting. Um, the little sweet chick. Yep. So that's more of like a kind of a counter service version of sweet chick. In a sports stadium. Of a handheld version. So I think that's something that could be done. It can even be at very, the airport. Yeah, exactly. So it could be done in a very small space. We can give, you know, the like this Nashville hot chicken that we had the other day at the fucking stadium was unbelievable. I was just like, you know, we've been working on this sandwich that's not in the restaurants, that's more of like a handheld version, um, and it's fucking amazing. So we were like, we got to build a little concept around this. So that's something I want to work on. We're probably going to do some festivals this summer nice. and test it out, you know, just kind of see what it what it's all about. Um but yeah, I mean, I think every major city, why can't every major city in, in, in America have a fucking sweet chick? You know, one thing I really love about your story is that, uh, you know, a young kid, uh, working uh, parents, you know, your father becomes a bartender, sober bartender. Yeah. You then fucking become a sober bartender. Yeah. Rest in peace to Pops. I know, it's kind of crazy. It's very... Rest in, rest in peace to Pops, but yeah. you, you, you open up a, a restaurant and, with, you know, in tribute to him. Yeah. Uh, close it down, but then you, you're still flourishing with, with Sweet Chick. What I'm trying to say is that the journey has been crazy. Yes. But more importantly, I will say Pop's got to be looking down. 100%. Very proud of you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I already know that. That's that like, you just didn't stay in the bar, even yeah. though he would have loved to stay in yeah, the bar. Yeah, well, you know what it is? Like when I say we talked about lying to friends in, in school saying he owned it, because my father always wanted to own a bar. Yeah. You know, we used to go back to Ireland as kids, um, you know, to visit all my cousins and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, my father was like, you know, both of my parents are like one of 16 kids, you know, mm. and they're the, my father was the only one ever to, to come to America. And we would used to drive by on the way to the airport, this bar, um, I think it was called the Six Alley. And my father used to be like, I was going to buy that bar. Mm. And that, and that was even with us. And we would have probably grew up in Ireland, which he didn't do. But, you know, I think he always dreamed about having his own business and to know that I have a business, you know, I think he wanted me to be a politician. Sure. I think my history would have crept up on me and that never <laughs> would have worked out. But, uh, no, nah, I definitely think he's, uh, he's very fucking proud of what's yeah. going on, you know? So. Not a journey is special, man. Listen, internets, uh, if you're in New York, if you're in Queens, if you're in LA, um, wherever you are, make sure you go visit a sweet chick, get the experience, get that kale BLT salad, get the shrimp and grits, get the chicken. But more importantly, um, the journey is is what's important and inspiring. You know, I think that that's where we're at these days, where people love food, but they love the story. Yeah, you know, yeah. whether it be like, oh, this is my friend John Seymour spot. Like, you know, he's a dope dude. He's he's overcame this, or, or even they say, oh, this is Nas spot. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. So it's whatever it is. I've seen I've seen to come up with Sweet Chick, and I'm very proud to watch. That's why I said, you know what, we gotta sit down one day and talk about. The journey because it, it's really that special. So listen, internets. Make sure. You, what, what is it on um, Twitter and uh, Instagram? Oh, at, sweet, at Sweet Chick Life. Sweet Chick Life. Listen, John. I'm proud of you. Um, continued success to Sweet Chick. Continued success to you and your family and everything you do. Thank you, bro. Um, the the president, entrepreneur, and chicken guy, and chicken guy, John Seymour, the guy from Sweet Chick. Forget about it. Hey, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheer. Internets, if you enjoyed that episode, I want you to email me at thepremiumpeatshow at gmail.com. Again, that email is thepremiumpeatshow at gmail.com. Let me know what you thought. And listen, all my advertisers out there, all my big businesses, my small businesses, whoever, a friend, a store, you want to advertise on the Premium Peach Show? Email me at thepremiumpeatshow at gmail.com and let's get working. Okay, make sure you subscribe, rate, leave a comment on all streaming platforms of the podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend, and we'll see you next episode. Cheer.